Greetings viewers and welcome to Wiki Talks. Yes, we have today a very interesting topic to discuss especially after Joe Biden's visit to UK and then the addition of uh, Sweden into NATO especially during the summit in uh, Vilnius in Lithuania what happened. We're going to get some quick updates concerning the Russo-Ukrainian conflict especially when it comes to this uh, emergency meeting between uh, NATO members or addition of Sweden into it and how it's going to impact the geopolitical situation when the war has already enter entered its next year. Today we have with us Brigadier Retired Bakar Hassan. He's a renowned defense analyst considering, considered based in Pakistan and he has a thorough grip when it comes to international conflicts. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. Sir, uh, Joe Biden's visit to UK and then uh, after that, after clearing the air and how NATO is going to proceed, uh, he has decided that somehow uh, in Helsinki, actually in Finland, he said that now Ukraine is on the victory trope and that Russia has finally succumbed to its wounds and probably they are losing this war. Do you see an end to this uh, strange conflict or it's going to escalate further since now the cluster munitions are being approved into this mess as well? And UK is supposed to head the convention, you know, supposed to yeah. stop the con uh, you know, cluster. Anyway, I think this is uh, uh, whatever. It looks very, very absurd. Ukraine has already lost one-fifth of its mm -hmm. real estate and it amounts to $1.5 trillion. Uh, in terms of industrial output, I think it's a huge loss. You look at the seaboard, less Odessa, everything is lost. You, know? you look at Crimea, uh, then Sevastopol, and rest of the seaboard. So there is no worthwhile port, less than Odessa, which mm -hmm. is left. And if you look at the uh, uh, military, uh, let's say, capability, I think uh, even uh, John, uh, uh, Colonel McGregor had m mentioned that they have lost uh, more than 50% of the military strength in terms of you know equipment, tanks, uh, aircrafts, and whatever they had. So, so I think the mathematics is very clear and if you look at Russian objectives, they have been able to because what was the objective was to basically demilitarize uh, Ukraine. In that sense, they should not be allied with the West, there should be no expansion of NATO uh, towards Ukraine and then it can remain neutral with Russia and uh, you know, so it can become a conduit of you know, passage of energy and trade and, and uh, it was a win-win situation. But I feel ultimately they are coming to the same position. So, NATO summit was, you know, initially, uh, uh, let's say, it was preceded by a visit to UK, where he met, uh, Biden met Rishi Shunak, and uh, I don't know, and then he probably went and met the king also, because he did not attend its inauguration. Uh, so, what was discussed, it was, I think, more of uh, information operations or uh, public relations. And then you have the summit, where probably Zelensky has been denied the opportunity, uh, and I, people feel that he even felt angry. Uh, the only success was, I think, Turkey uh, then uh, admitting. Yeah, they acknowledged annoying. the addition of Sweden. Uh, Sweden. Into it. And, and then he moved to meet the Nordic states in uh, Finland, Helsinki. And there comes a statement that we have won. I mean, it's, it's really uh, what I feel they have turned Ukraine into an info ops theater, an absurd info ops theater, which has been used basically to undermine the Russian Federation and President Putin. Uh, they thought that they'll be able to scuttle its economy, they'll be able to isolate Russia diplomatically and cut it off from the rest of the world, including, you know, the SWIFT system, they threw out Russia. But uh, I think Russians played very smart, President Putin and Lavrov. And uh, their military, I think they've been able to achieve their objectives. Uh, Russia is now more integrated with Russia than uh, it was before this. Conflict. So, what what are your thoughts concerning the lend lease option? The NATO and its allies, the U.S. has been just throwing in weapons in Ukraine. You call it from long-range rocket launchers like the HIMARS. We used to hear this so much in different uh, you know YouTube channels about certain HIMARS strikes. You know, uh, they uh, they used to hit strategic targets, but suddenly that has faded away. Then there was this sudden hue and cry were concerned the Leopard 2 tanks and how they're going to change the battlefield in Ukraine's favor. And the current videos coming from the Zaporozhia front tell us a very different side of the story that uh, the Leopard 2 A's couldn't even penetrate the first line of defense and apparently their silent offensive 
came to a conclusion and now they're saying they were just probing attacks. Maybe they just lost all of their fighting vehicles, especially used in the new uh, raised up NATO trained mechanized brigades who were trained for the last six months came up here to conduct an offensive and now we are seeing a counter offensive being developed by the Russians in the Kupiansk front and they have somehow contained this uh, I don't know NATO onslaught on this Aprosia front so are they going to continue with this lens lease or somehow they're going to come out of this unless Zelensky comes up with something else yeah I think before we come to lend lease which is I think very important uh, it's uh, uh, I feel pity, you know, and time I feel that what do they you know, teach at Fort Leavenworth or for that matter, you know, King's mm -hmm. College or uh, RCDS and even German institutions, if the Warmast has that. Uh, basically, it goes against any level of tactics, operation strategy or plan mm -hmm. strategy. Mm -hmm. The way, you know, the war has been conducted. Uh, the way NATO has been sending, you know, these so-called leopards. So, mm. as, as I mentioned, it's become an info ops theater, mm. and it's an info op theater circus where they are trying to convince the Western audience, and maybe the, you know, the, the great military industrial complex is benefiting. So, there mm. may be bigger games that we don't know. Uh, there were talk of, you know, Germans opening a factory in Poland yeah. for building up leopard tools and all that. So, so it's basically that. Now it comes to you know certain basic uh, you know elements of tactics. And you know they are also coming up with absurd statements. Uh, the German defense minister said that the Leopard 2 tanks that have been given to Ukraine are not German tanks. They are Ukrainian tanks. That's Ukrainian tanks. So are they trying to you know stop the market onslaught that is going? Yeah, it's, it's, I think they're, 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 they're playing like TikTok <laughs> on the battlefield, and uh, it's very very unfair. Yeah. Look at the losses in terms of uh, spinning losses, migrations, mm -hmm. women and children have been dislocated. So, we have to look at the humanitarian angle also. But unfortunately, uh, for their own purposes, they turned into an op theater. And so, there was no basic, like the employment of, now if I was there, you know, uh, let's say there were 150 to 200 tanks and uh, other <coughs> latest uh, vehicles given to Ukraine for this so-called counter-offensive. Uh, actually, it's an insult to the term counter-offensive. Basically, it was, I have mentioned in some of the forums that remains to be a large size attack. But then it can't be done in penny pockets, mm -hmm. penny packets. You can't do it. Armor has to be employed concentrated. You choose a place of, you know, point of application, point of decision, and then you employ it. So, so they've gone against, you know, all the basic norm. And the result is obvious. If you start sending squadrons, ill-trained, you know. So, mm -hmm. a column of two tanks and nine MIRVs don't function? Yeah, yeah, it can't okay. become a squadron. So, and the Russians are very smart. They were using drones, they were using, uh, you know, uh, firepower, the, uh, uh, their firepower is tremendous, artillery. And uh, of course, uh, they have an air superiority, so they mm -hmm. were to neutralize most of uh, what came in. And I think this NATO summit is also an acknowledgement. Probably, uh, there was a news that I think Lavrov have been contacted through mm -hmm. two-track diplomacy. Mm -hmm. There were certain military or intelligence officials from the U.S. who met him. And probably, there is a negotiation for you know, a settlement. But unfortunately, the neocons, you know, sitting in the West who drive, you know, DC and mm -hmm. London and Brussels uh, will not agree. So, they'll keep, uh, you know, let uh, Ukraine bleed. And then, you know, extension of uh, NATO to Finland uh, and then uh, including Sweden. So, what are you trying? Basically, trying to assure themselves, no, you know, we are going to be having collective security. Uh, despite, I don't think so, President Putin has any aims to let's say, go and uh, attack uh, the Eastern European countries. His main thing was that you have to stop here. NATO has not. So, I am sure the message came out of the NATO summit was that one, Zelensky is not getting it. And they said that in the long run, you know, they are looking at. So, they are looking at you know, whatever is left in Ukraine to be mm. part of NATO. Mm -hmm. And there is talk of balkanization. The Polish are looking at it. Mm -hmm. The Romanians are looking at it. Even Moldova is looking at certain areas. Mm -hmm. So, are we looking at uh, grand partnerization of Ukraine? It will be very, very unfortunate. So, how can we draw a conclusion out of this? Like uh, the NATO summit, uh, they want to add in the cluster munition slot as well. Land lease is going to continue as long as uh, Ukraine can hold for some time. Are they trying to buy off time for a final solution or they really believe that Ukraine can pull it off? I think the war right from the outset was, you know, conducted uh, in a very, uh, I would say, naive manner. One is that when your country is fighting, mm. you don't outsource the command, the political and military command, the operational command of the war, 
to anybody else. Hmm. So let's say it was Ukrainian war, but now if there are advisors and you know even uh, so-called veterans, you know, and uh, you know <coughs> volunteers coming from there, and everyone is trying to drive his own tactics and strategy. Mm -hmm. So what message is going to the Ukrainian soldier or the officer who is fighting on the battlefield? You've seen in Bakhmut, mm -hmm. they lost I think more than fifty thousand. <coughs> uh, KIA or injured Wounded, yeah. and uh, it went against the law of diminishing returns because uh, you cannot shove forces the requirement of two brigades you shove ten brigades so it will not bring you success so I, I, I at times I feel that uh, so unfortunate uh, what uh, tactics and strategy they have learned and Ukrainians have suffered because they outsourced the war they outsourced the command to NATO and the neocons Yes, interesting. Uh, viewers, uh, the summary when it comes to the NATO summit and the ongoing war in Ukraine is two, can be quickly summed up in small sentences, especially for Ukraine, for Mr. Zelensky, it's more like a PR stunt. Obviously, he wants to save his position when it comes to his country as a, as a president. And when it comes to NATO and its allies, they would they would want Ukraine to act as a proxy against Russia for even eternity if they if they can pull that off. And surprisingly, uh, when it comes to Russia, it wants to get a hold of the Russian population inside Ukraine, uh, calling it its uh, uh, them as their own. And but they do want a way out of this war. But uh, as we have seen, this war has been going on for quite a long time now. It's been more than a year and we can see that uh, poking the bear was not a wise choice, especially when it comes to different NATO members who are still seeking for a full-scale uh, uh, escalation between Russia and NATO as well as in, on different sides of the borders. So let's hope that doesn't happen. Otherwise, we're going to see an exploding world pretty soon. Please make sure that you like and subscribe the video. We will meet you in the next update. Thank you very much.